Hi, so this video is meant to give an outline of how to approach the question regulation of cardiac output. So this has been frequently asked as a short essay question like for example uh, define cardiac output, cardiac index and explain the regulation of cardiac output. So we will see how to write that answer. So you can start your answer with the definition. So what is meant by cardiac output? So cardiac output is a quantity of the blood pumped into the iota each minute by the heart or in other words it is the output of the heart per unit time. Next you have to write the normal values. So in a resting man it averages around 5 liters per minute. So if the heart rate is around 72 his cardiac output will be around 5 liters per minute. So that is because cardiac output is stroke volume into heart rate. So if the stroke volume is 70 and the heart rate is 72 then his uh, cardiac output will be 5. Now there is another term called cardiac index which is nothing but the output per minute per square meter of the body surface. So here we can see that there is another, uh, another unit that is per square meter and the normal value is 3.2 liters per minute per meter square. Okay. Now we will see the regulation of cardiac output. So as I said before cardiac output is stroke volume into heart rate. So the regulation of cardiac output can be divided as regulation of stroke volume as well as regulation of heart rate. In regulation of stroke volume we can explain the heterometric regulation as well as homometric regulation and in regulation of heart rate you can mention about the neural control as well as the humoral control. We will quickly see each one by one. So first now we will see the regulation of the stroke volume. See it is called heterometric regulation. Why is it called heterometric? Hetero means different right and metric means length. So here in this type of regulation the cardiac output change is occurring by the change in the ventricular muscle length. So that but because there is a change in length it is called heterometric. So why is there a change in ventricular muscle length? Well that is because of this increased preload. So we know that preload is the load that acts on the muscle before contraction. So in case of heart it is the end diastolic volume. So when if the end diastolic volume increases what will happen to the length of the muscle fiber? It will increase. So this in accordance to Frank Starling's law will then cause an increase in contractility which in turn will cause an increase in the stroke volume and increase in the cardiac output. So this is meant by heterometric regulation. Okay. So the next type of regulation in of stroke volume is homometric regulation. So why is it called homometric? In this type of regulation there is no change in the length. Okay. So here the change is in the afterload or in case of the heart it is a afterload is a peripheral resistance. So we know that afterload is a load that acts on the muscle once it starts contracting. Right. So in, in case of heart it is a peripheral resistance. So if there is an increase in the peripheral resistance there will be a decrease in the cardiac output. Right. So this type of regulation is known as homometric regulation. Okay. Now we will see about the regulation of the heart rate. So regulation of heart rate as I said before there can be neural control as well as humoral control. So we will see neural control first. So the first and the most important mechanism which determines our heart rate is the autonomic nervous system. So we know that it's our heart has got a very rich sympathetic supply as well as parasympathetic supply. So first we will see the role of the sympathetic system. So whenever there is a sympathetic stimulation there will be an increase in the heart rate. There will be an increase in the myocardial contractility as well as venoconstriction and all this will in turn increase the cardiac output. So the mechanism of action of the sympathetic system is that the norepinephrine will act on the beta 1 receptors which will in turn cause an increase in cyclic AMP levels and thereby cause influx of the calcium. So that is the cause for this increased heart rate and myocardial contractility as well as venoconstriction. Next we will see the role of parasympathetic system. Parasympathetic system decreases the heart rate. It does not have much effect on the myocardial contractility. Okay, and the mechanism of action is the acetylcholine will act on the M2 receptors present on the heart and in turn will cause increased potassium efflux by opening special channels called acetylcholine regulated potassium channels. It will also cause a decrease in the cyclic campaign and all this will in turn lead to a decrease in the heart rate. Okay. 
So that is the mechanism of parasympathetic system. Next, we will see the role of medullary medulla in case of the regulation of heart rate. So here again, the medulla it is a medulla that controls the sympathetic as well as the parasympathetic innervation to these to the heart and the other blood vessels. So we will see how. So in the medulla, we've got centers like the nucleus tractus solitarius, dorsal motor, motor nucleus, nucleus ambiguous, the rostral ventrolateral medulla, and the caudal ventrolateral medulla. These are the chief centers that regulate our heart rate as well as other parameters like blood pressure. So we'll see how. So in case of parasympathetic innervation, the nucleus tractus solitarius in turn innervates the dorsal motor nucleus, which in turn se sends impulses to the nucleus ambiguous, and this via vagus nerve will act on the heart to decrease the heart rate. Okay, so this is how the parasympathetic innervation or parasympathetic control of medulla takes place. Now we'll see how the sympathetic control of the medulla takes place. So from the nucleus tractus solitarius, there are nerve fibers to the caudal ventrolateral medulla, CCVLM. Now from there, there are GABAergic neurons sending its impulses to the rostral ventrolateral medulla. Okay, so rostral ventrolateral medulla is actually a tonically active area which in turn sends down its impulses via the intramediolateral gray column of the spinal cord. And from there, it sends its impulses via the sympathetic ganglion to the heart. And in turn, it will cause an increase in the heart rate. So see, both the sympathetic as well as the parasympathetic innervation has areas in the medulla to control it. Okay, so that is the role of medulla in case of regulation of heart rate. So next, we will see the reflex control of heart rate. So the reflex control include the baroreceptor reflex, the chemoreceptor reflex, the Bainbridge reflex, as well as the Cushing's reflex. So I'm not going on to the details of what these reflexes are, but these headings should be there when you write the reflex control of heart rate. Next, we'll see the humoral control of heart rate. So by humoral control, we mean the role of hormones as well as role of chemicals. So which are the hormones that regulate our heart rate? So basically, we've got the most important one are the catecholamines, which are secreted by the adrenal medulla. Then we've got uh, hormones secreted by the pancreas, which are the insulin and the glucagon. Then we've got a thyroid hormones as well as the growth hormone, which is secreted from the pituitary. So these are the hormones which in general increase the heart rate. Next, we'll see some chemicals that uh, act on the heart. So first of all, oxygen. So we know that mild hypoxia actually causes tachycardia, right? So if there is a moderate to severe hypoxia, it will lead to decrease in cardiac output by suppressing myocardial contractility. So in general, we can remember that whenever there is a decrease in oxygen, there will be an increase in the heart rate. Next is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide also has direct and indirect effect on the myocardium. But its action is in general by depressing the myocardium. Okay. And then pH. Here again, acidosis will in turn depresses the myocardium. So these are some of the factors or chemicals that regulate the heart rate. So when a question like regulation of cardiac output is asked, we have to first write the regulation of stroke volume in which we've seen about the heterometric regulation as well as homometric regulation and then regulation of heart rate in which we've seen about the neural control wherein you have to write about the autonomic control, the medullary control as well as the reflex control. And then we've seen about the humoral control in which you have to write about the hormones as well as the chemicals. And then you can write some applied aspects like uh, shock and cardiac failure to complete the answer. So, so I hope you now know how to write this uh, answer when such a question is asked for the exam. Thank you.